I think like 98% of people are going to get this wrong. Um, it's, it's obvious what the answer is to me, but I, I know what I'm doing. And, and you got to be able to look at these choices and be like, what is the rule here? Again, people are going to look at this kind of like question 18 and think about verbs, but you got to think there's multiple verb tense rules. This doesn't seem to be singulars and plurals. It doesn't seem to be past, present, future because why are verbs completely disappearing? Why are commas coming and going? That's not about when does this take place. That's the two and ing rule again. But notice we don't have either of those things. We don't have a two version of the word were. We don't have um, an ing version of the word were. We don't have a two or ing version of the word works. So uh, this is a weird thing. But if you truly understand what I mean when I when I talk about this two and ing rule, then then it doesn't matter that the two and ing are there or not. It's about how does the verb affect the structure of the sentence. I called it the two and ing rule because the vast majority of the time, there's a two and there's an ing. Here's an exception, but it's still that rule. So I got to think, what are these commas doing? How is this word were affecting the structure of the sentence? And if I look ahead, I've got a comma here. I've got a comma here. I've got a comma here. Not only do I have to worry about the comma that's there in the blank, but I have to think about all the other commas too, because that's what this is testing. So let's take a look. English poet and Shakespeare contemporary John Donne's works were much admired during his lifetime and in the decades that followed. Yeah, sounds great. But that's not the sentence because it doesn't end here. That's a comma. So what's happening? Had. So wait a minute. English poet and Shakespeare contemporary John Donne's works were much admired during his lifetime and the decades that followed had at the time of their enthusiastic rediscovery by the 20th century modernists been essentially gathering dust for the intervening 250 years. So. Hopefully that sounds weird. It, it's very weird because it's wrong. So we got to think about what's what's going on. Well, I see right away what now the, the two commas here, I'll use the highlighter. Um, these commas starting here and continuing on are adding in an extra interruption. So let's remove that. Had been essentially gathering. That's, that's how this is supposed to flow. So English poet and Shakespeare contemporary John Donne's works had been essentially gathering dust for the intervening tw uh, 250 years. Yeah, that, that seems like a sentence. And otherwise, what is the had been really part of here? Had been essentially gathering dust, right? So I don't know. Um, this is where we have to think about now, if, if we have this other comma after followed, are we breaking the sentence in some other way? If if the part followed is not part of the had been part of the sentence, then what's it doing there? Well, maybe it's also an interruption. Maybe we also need to kind of get this extra piece out of there. So if I kind of back this up, where where is the start of this interruption? Well, it has to be in the blank because there's no other commas anywhere else. So that means it maybe is the word were, maybe it just kind of starts with that, but it seems like it can't be A or D because those don't have that start to the interruption that we really need. So let's, let's try out B and C. I don't think the were is going to make much sense there, but English poet and Shakespeare contemporary John Donne's works had been essentially gathering dust for the intervening 250 years. Okay. I'm, I'm comfortable with that being the sentence. So let's try it now with the piece in. English poet and Shakespeare company John uh, to English poet and Shakespeare contemporary John Donne's works much admired during his lifetime and the decades that followed had at the their, at the time of their enthusiastic rediscovery by the early 20th century modernists been essentially gathering dust for the intervening 250 years. So we don't need the were um, because we don't we're not really continuing the thought in the same way um, with a, the, a subject and a verb. We are just kind of adding on this extra description. Right, the uh, the works of John Donne we're saying were much admired during his lifetime, but we're not saying it as a sentence. We're adding that piece in as an extra piece of information, so we can't put that verb in. Otherwise, it completely messes up the the flow of the sentence. Um, and the only reason I know that is I continued reading and I thought about all these other commas. So this is really tricky. Like I said, I, I think like ninety eight percent of people are going to get this wrong, um, but. 
it is what it is. Uh, it's it's still following the same basic rules, the same basic twists that we see on other two and ing questions. We have to think about the structure of the sentence. We have to examine every comma, every clause. We have to do some trial and error to figure out what the sentence is trying to say. I want to be very clear that I don't read this the first time through and instantly know what's going on. I have to work at it, but I know what to work at because I'm able to think about what this rule is pr probably testing, and that it's really about the sentence structure. So I, I remove different pieces, I put them back in, I, I kind of piece together this. So just to finish the highlighting here, this is the sentence all in yellow. And then the pink is all stuff we could get rid of. It's two separate things. It's two separate interruptions. So we could get rid of one, but not the other, and that would still be fine. But regardless, the yellow is the heart of this thing. And everything is based on that. And so I had to figure that out. I have three pieces, right? Look at the yellow. It's split up into three bits. One of those bits is just the word had. Who writes like that? That's stupid. That's bad writing. But it's grammatically correct. And that's what we're up against. It's a sentence you would never write that you shouldn't write. And yet it's a puzzle. We had to solve the puzzle. And it, sometimes the puzzles are really, really tricky. But you know what it's supposed to look like. So you can persist and get through this. I, I think it's still possible to get every grammar question right, even when you have stuff like this in the mix.